Hello, everyone. Today, I want to have a little talk about our little friend. Maybe you know him, Bob. Who, who does know him? Great, at least the half of them. So, Bob is the builder. Bob is a very famous and nice guy, and he wants to create things. And today, Bob wants to build a house. So, but before we do that, let me introduce myself. My name is officially Alexander Klein. Everyone is calling me Sasha, even my parents, so please be invited to call me Sasha. Sasha is the, Ru the Russian short version of Alexander. I live in Germany and I work at Codecentric. I'm branch manager and as well do still a lot of code working, helping my colleagues, being um, the fire extinguisher or anything like, like that, tech advisor. And I'm very much geeky, in, especially in the Groovy area. I like it very, very much. And I'm working with Groovy for at least the last nine years in almost any project I'm working on. And yes, I as well like to give you some uh, information I collected in the past. And by the way, I'm as well um, working together with Andres on Griffin. So if you have any interest in desktop application development via Groovy, be welcome to ask me. So let's focus on Bob. Bob wants to build a house, as I said. And as we want to do that with a computer, let's focus on what it should look like. Just a quick draw through the data behind all the stuff we are working on later on. First of all, we need a house. And yeah, this house, this has some house, uh, some numbers. Oh, wrong. Mm, doesn't work, no matter. OK, um, so we have a number where this house is in the street. Then we have some kind of material it's built upon, bricks or stuff like that. Then it has a roof object and it has a list of levels that we could have for the house. The material is a simple enum. I think you might know that kind of stuff. And the roof as well has kind of material, but here just for the sake of confusion um, demonstration, I want to say let's use this material as strings. And the string is just a property of the roof, or the material, and the color of the roof as well is just a property. Additionally, we have these levels. These levels, they have a name, a floor name, and they consist of a list of rooms. And last but not least, we have this room. This is well very simple. We have, and the room has a name, and the room contain, can contain other rooms. This might be a bit unusual, but just think about a cellar, and in the cellar you have different rooms, and inside of a uh, room is another room where you can store some food or stuff like that. So possibly, let's think about that this could be possible. So, all in all, what I want to talk about is not only Bob and his house, but I want to talk about a pattern. It's the builder pattern. Who has ever heard of the builder pattern? <coughs> Great. And I think most of you as well have heard of the Java builder pattern. Um, who did ever work with the Java builder pattern? Okay, almost everyone. Um, it could look like that that we have a house builder, we create a builder, and then we say, OK, we add a number, in this case, the number one. We add a material, we add a roof, and here for the roof, we as well get the builder of the roof and add the material and the color and then create the instance with the build method, and so on. We just go through all this as well with the list of levels that as well is created out of builders with the build methods. Nothing special here. I think so. So this Java builder pattern in Groovy, to create that in Groovy is very, very complicated. Not. 
because this is just how it could look like, because we can just do that by adding a simple annotation, the add builder annotation. So all the rest is the same as before, but if we add the builder annotation, you automatically get all the stuff we just saw here. So you can on the class you can say dot builder method, you get the builder and you can go on with that. Uh, okay, for God's sakeness, not only with the house, we have to do add the annotation with the other classes as well, but I think it should be doable. But this is a groovy conference, and I think we will as well want to do it a little bit groovy, more groovy, and um, from time to time you as well might have heard of the groovy builder pattern. Do you know, or did you ever work with any kind of groovy builder pattern? And the rest of you who didn't work with it, is there anyone who doesn't know what the groovy builder pattern is? Okay, just a few about that. Still have a little bit of recap. It looks like that. So we have, as well, an instance of the builder, and there you can call methods. Here the house method, and then you can set attributes like the house number. And then you have kind of closure, where you say everything that is inside of the closure is part of the outer instance, so in this case the house. So everything inside of the closure is in the house or part of the house. So here we have the material that are bricks. Then we have a roof. Uh, this is built of tiles and has a color of red. And there we have different levels, so the same level, 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 but with different names, and this can contain different, um, different rooms. And these rooms can have the name just as, a uh, as an argument or as a named argument. So this is the same thing that you see if you work with Swing Builder, um, Scene Graph Builder, or any other builder, Markup Builder, what you maybe learned to love in Groovy. So this session is let's do that stuff our own, so create our house builder. So. The general contract for that is for our node. The node is that we want to create is the method name. So if we want to create a house, we call the node house. So the other thing is this method, we do it as a method call, so method and then brackets, and then we can say, okay, this can have zero to one values. So we can add a value here, but it's optional. Um, this is often used to give a simplification like a text and that uh, because the text is very often used. I as well have the possibility that I don't have to add text, colon, and the text. So I just can say if I just have is it a value without a name, then it is the text, for example. Many cases. But you can do it for on any other things you would like to. And we can add zero to uh, multitude of attributes, something like named attributes, where we, uh, named parameters, where we just say name, colon, something, and so on. And then we have a closure here, a closure from there to there, or here as well, a closure. Um, and anything that is part of the closures is a subnode. So here we have a subnode with the same rules, and in here we have something that's called a leaf that is a normal node, with the difference that a leaf is not allowed to have subnodes. So this is the only difference, but it's just naming convention. Technically, it's the same. So if you want to build that, let's build that by hand, first of all. So if we want to build a house, or if Bob wants to build a house, he has to build a scaffolding. The scaffolding for the house, okay, let's create a class. And this class has a, um, has a sub subclass. It's a uh, subclass, sorry. It has to be called, oh, just something. Had to be called handcraft. So it should be a, no, it's, it's, it's an instance. It's a method. So here we can call a method. It's called house. 
So the handcraft scaffolding is building a house. So what we have here is our builder. So when we call the house method, uh, then we can give it a closure. Here we just call it blueprint. And so in here we just do that, we create an instance and then we call the house method and give it a house method and give it a closure. And then it's doing something. So what is it doing? It's just calling the content of the, uh, of the, of the closure. So we create a new house. Then we say, okay, we have a blueprint and for safety reasons we just clone this blueprint that uh, we don't kill the original, so we just have a plan. This is a copy of the, blu of the blueprint. And then we say, okay, all the delegates, all the del um, where it delegates to, it delegates to the builder itself. Does everyone know what a delegate is? Or who, who does not? Okay, so delegation pattern is the way that you say, um, any method calls and any property access uh, that I want to do is um, not targeting to what it looks like, but targeting to something different. So, for example, I have a list or a class that implements list interface. Um, then I could implement all the methods for the list, or I could say, okay, in there I have an instant variant, a variable list, and all the methods just call the corresponding method in this list. This pattern is called delegation. And in, a, in closures, we have the same thing, that uh, in a closure, you call a method ABC brackets something, you want to call that, um, then the closure is looking, okay, do I have this ABC inside of my local scope? No, I don't. So then I go one step up, and this one step up is in general, um, then I look, oh, is there anything in my, um, in my surrounding class out there, right? And in the surrounding class, if it's there, then I just call it. This is what you would expect. Groovy closures have the special ability that it has a little bit more layers. The first layer is, um, or from, from button up, we have this local scope, right? But we as well have three special or two special methods or um, attributes in a closure. One is the owner and the other is the delegate. So standard resource strategy, this is what we have here, is a thing that it first looks if it's in local scope. If not, it looks, is it in the delegate, uh, in, 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 sorry, in the owner. The owner, by default, is a link to the surrounding class where I just had where the closure had been defined. So it's looking just in this scope. But if a closure is implemented inside of another closure, then the owner is a link to the surrounding closure and not to the surrounding class. So <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, in this way, we can just it just looks okay. Let's look for the owner. The owner by default is a standard to the link, and but we have as well have the thing of the delegate. The delegate is something that the developer can just change. So um, where we can say, okay, um, I want to add a map or something like that in there as well. And there I have closures or um, arguments, any variables that I can access from inside of the closure. So this is what they're doing here as well, and because the default strategy is first look into um, the owner and then into the delegate, in this case we want to change that we first want to look into the delegate and then we want to look into the owner. And um, the delegate here is the builder, so if I'm inside of a closure, like here, uh, here, if I'm inside of this closure and I call a method, no, uh, sorry, here is an example like that. If I'm here, in the, I'm in the closure of the house, and inside I call another method. Because the delegate of this closure outside here is the builder itself, it's another call on a method on the builder factory, where we just had been. So, this is what 
what is done here? I just say, okay, the delegate is the builder. Then I say the resource strategy is first look into the delegate, or here, either delegate first, or only look into the de delegate. And then execute this plan, what is the copy of the blueprint, that is the closure. So execute clo the closure, and then return the house, because maybe the house had changed something, uh, the closure had changed something in the house. So, this is our result. So now, if we just do that, we have a house with no material, no roof, number zero, and no levels. So step by step, adding some details. So first, the next thing is we want to add the, or have a, want to have a way to set the number and set a material. Here we just add the enum. So as we said. So what you can do here is almost the same thing. The only difference is here that we take this map that has all the named arguments and we give it to the default construction shortcut for a Groovy constructor. If you have a default constructor in Groovy and you give it a map or a map-like structure, after constructing the, inst uh, the instance, it's calling all the setters for all the keys in the map. So if you have a name key, then it's called the set name method with the value of the of the key value pair, and so on. So it's automatically initializing our, our class, and this is what is done here. So this is what you want here. So it calls the set number with one, and it calls the set material with bricks. So we are done with these attributes. That's really nice. So now we can say, okay, it has a number, and it has a material bricks. The next thing is that we want to have a roof. To add the roof, first of all, we do all the stuff that we did before. There's no difference. But the other thing is what we add another method. This method is called roof because we want to call the method roof. This is part of the house. And there we as well want to add some attributes, named and unnamed arguments. So what we do here is we say, okay, this roof method is called, the same thing than before. Um, but here you have the attributes and we can give the material. So we say, okay, create a new instance of the roof, put all the attributes, so everything is initialized nicely, and then say, okay, the material of the root is just the material. So in case if anyone had written material colon something and given the, um, the material in here, this material wins. Um, then we just say, okay, let's take the house. That we just, that's the difference here. We just save the house outside so we can access it from the roof method um, and set the roof to this new instance. That's it. It's every, everything we need. So then we can go on. Now we as well have the roof object where we have material and color. Let's do a little bit of refactoring step because later on we would need it. Uh, the thing is, these running a closure we will have to do very often later on, maybe. And it's not so ha nice to have it cluttering. Oh, here is it. Here, cluttering this method. And if we have it later on, we have the same problem, and we will. Because of that, we just pull it out into method run closure. It's nothing different. It's just in the a different method. Because what I did as well, is, uh, or what I wanted here is now, is to add the levels. And for the levels, um, we have, might have the problem that we want to have the context where its level is. So we, now we had stored, um, stored the house as an instant here, but this is only nicely for one house but not um, to take track where we currently are. Because of that, here we just extend this run closure, but we give the possibility to give the current instance, or the currently created instance in here, and then we have the way that, that we can save the parent, where I come from, and the current instance that I can access from all over my builder. 
Therefore, I just put it into a stack. So after I created the instance, I save my current and say, OK, let's have a look to the stack. If the stack is empty, then give me the last, uh, last element or the first in the stack. Otherwise, my current is null. Then pop the stack and then save the next result to the parent. And for that, if, that, uh, if it should work, then before that, you have to save the parent, push it to the stack, and set the current instance. So here, if you call that, you have my current instance. This is what I just get here. And my parent is stored, so inside it, uh, in here, I can call the parent to get my parent. And here I get one level uh, higher. So if I have that thing, I can create the stories. I add another me method called level. This is create a new instance of level with a floor, name, and then I run my closure. So here's the reason because I re um, refactor it because now I have to use it at least twice. And here I say, OK, I give my blueprint as my closure and as well the level that I'm currently working on. So it can be saved as the current instance and saved for the parent. And then after that, I say, OK, then please give me the parent and add this level to the list of levels. So now I can say roof, level, 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 and all this stuff, is, uh, all these instances are added to the house, to the levels list of the house. So I have my result in here. Um, so for the next step, for the material, I want to simplify things because we said we had a enum in here. But sometimes it's as well easier to give it as strings. So let's do it both ways. So if I give, away, uh, give a string in here in the material, I just say in my material method, oh, if it is a string, then please get the value of this string. And if not, then just use this instance as it is. So this way you have the way to add um, enums and add strings or use strings. So and now we want to create the rooms. And the interesting thing with the rooms is um, that here we want to have the possibility to have the name thing, uh, named arguments and non named arguments. Otherwise, it's not so big. But here, rooms can contain different rooms. So we have some kind of recursion in here where we have to take care of. So if we add our room method, same thing as usual, um, I just have two. I could have attributes, otherwise I don't. If you ever work with uh, named arguments or optional arguments in lists, there are some cases where I still have to use two methods in Groovy to prevent confusion because of types, so the compiler will not get confused. So this is one of the cases. But here you have the room method, where I get my information, my attributes, my name, and my blueprint. So far, so good. I create my new instance. Um, and then if the name here is null, then take the null. Um, there is not null, then set it. Otherwise, it will have been set by the attributes if it's in the as a named argument. And then run the closure and then put it to the rooms of the parent. Um, because we before we just remembered what our parent is, we can just use that. So we don't have to add our room to a special instance. We can just say, okay, just add it to my parent. This could be here, this could be the level, or here it could be a room. Because of duct typing in Groovy, we don't have to care um, if that these two classes have the same interface or are um, extended or implementing as a common interface. Duct typing is just getting, um, it's just using, if this method is existing, then we can use it. So if the room method is existing. So this had been the way how we could 
would create it if we do it by hand completely. But Groovy wouldn't be Groovy if we wouldn't have some support from our language and, and libraries. So because of that, as Bob is a bright guy, and he as well sometimes reads some documentation, and he read some information about a you know, plant-like structure to simplify his life, he found the builder support. And then he said, OK, it had been interesting and nice, but now let's try to do the same thing with builder support. Maybe this will help make it simplify these things, as Wanker said, simplific uh, simplification is an important thing, and I totally agree. All we have to do is extend our class, our builder class, by builder support. And then we mostly have three methods we have to implement. One of them, or two of them, are almost the same. These are create nodes, create node with net value and without. This had been the same thing that we had in the roof uh, implementation we just had. So it's just delegating here with, the with null as a value. So here we can say, okay, if my name, that's some, the name is the name of the node. If my name is, in this case, house, then create a new house. And use the attributes to fill the values. So this is our first step. The other thing is we have the set parent. At the moment, we don't use it. We don't need it. We have a look to that later on. So now for my first step, I have my house, and I as well can add the attributes, like the house numbers. So this is identically to what we had before. So the next step is adding the details like the roof, for example. So what we have to do here is just have another case here in the switch where we just create a new roof and we just say, okay, take the attributes and then add the material from this value what we just got here. And then we have the thing done. Um, but we as well want to add the roof to the house. And now comes the set parent thing um, into account because the Groovy Builder support is just giving us this tracking of the current and the parent instance is just doing that for us. We don't have to take care of that. So um, after the node is created, after the node is created, the set parent will be called. And here we can do what we need. So here we can say, okay, if the child is a roof, then please take the parent, set the roof property to the child that we just got added. That's it. Next thing, adding the level. It's very straightforward. Add a new instance, and here in the set parent, just say, okay, add it to the list of levels of my parent. Um, if we want, if now, in, if we want to add other stuff like roof and level, they have done all these. So for the material, to add it as a note here for, um, yeah, material is something. It's almost the same thing. The only thing that we say, okay, we get it as a enum, a material enum, we just use it, otherwise create the enum from the string. And here in the set parents, then we know it is an enum, so we can just set it. Easy enough, faster than the way before. So for the rooms, this is well easy because we have almost everything we need. We just say, okay, the room name is either the value or a part of the attributes. But he would just say, okay, let's take the name from the attributes, if there is any, and remove it from the attributes. So it's, it's not in there. We save it in the room name in the case that we need it. And then we can just easily add the attributes to the room. Then the name will not be in the way, because if there is no set name, then it could conflict. And here we don't need to, but just for a trick, what you could do if you have these problems. So otherwise, we just add the room to the room lists, and that's it. So this way, builder support simplifies implementation a lot, because it's just putting all the things into one place, and it's helping us to take track of my parent and 
current instance. And it's getting dark? No? This, as the sun comes up, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, in the meantime, um, as Bob is thinking, oh, Groovy is so cool, maybe Groovy has another thing, because it's still it's some kind of tedious with this switch and stuff. And he found the factory builder support. That is as well a builder support, but it's working a bit different. Um, because, oh, you don't see anything. I see you. <coughs> Uh huh. Okay. Um, should I dance something for you in the meantime? Or? Okay. Um, we have for the factory builder support. What I can tell without the slides is um, the difference between factory builder support and builder support. Besides some features, is that the um, builder support is useful if you don't know the names of the nodes beforehand, like for example you're creating some XML file from it. There the user is writing the name of the tag, so of the node that should be created. This is something you cannot do with factory support. Um, can we? Oh, yeah, this is still booting. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but as soon as you know all the possibilities up front, you can say, okay, let's separate the logic for all these parts, like these, into several factories, factory for this node, a factory for that node, and so on. So you can just take the logic apart and you can make it more readable, make it more simple. Um, yep, hello. What to say else without some view? Maybe we get a picture soon. Ah. There's a light. Fine <laughs> place. Ah, great. So. So. This is what you have to do for your sky. Astoundingly, we have to extend the factory builder support for the factory. And then we have some methods. Because the thing is, here we have normal initialization or a constructor. In between, we have this register called, because it's some kind of magic that all methods starting with, with register will be executed in, uh, in the constructor. So in here, in the constructor of factory builder support, it will look for all methods that start with the register and execute it. So for initialization, so here we can say, okay, register a bean factory. A bean factory is some kind of standard factory that is saving you a lot of work and just saying, okay, if you have a bean, and this bean has methods and properties, and you just want to do that in the standard bean way, so that you have setters and getters, stuff like that, you just have to register the class of the bean, and it's doing all the factory stuff for the house all alone. So these attributes, adding these attributes and using the value. So in this case, with a house, we can go do it the easy way. Um, Another thing is that the part after the register is some kind of name. It's called the group name. If there are any needs inside of your builder that you need to know in which group this um, factory that you're using later on is registered, then you can read it and use it and do whatever you like with it. Sometimes it's very helpful, this feature. Otherwise, there is no... By default, if you don't do anything, this is nothing special. It's just the name. So for creating the roof, here we say, okay, let's do something more special, and the special is especially uh, <laughs> is adding the references. So 
we create our own factory. How it looks like, we will so see in a moment. And then we can do like that, what we had before. We just have to extend abstract factory. And this needs to implement some methods, especially the new instance method. But is leave this just returning if this node can the leave it may not contain other nodes then it will be checked by the builder as well so here in the new instance there we just create the new instance with instance we are working with so in this case the roof because it's the roof factory so we create the instance set the material by um, and by value and material. And then we set the parent. So we have a method, set parent, that gets called as before, as soon as the new instance is uh, instantiated or a new instance method is called. So now we get the builder, we get the parent and the child, and we can say, okay, if the parent is a house, then add the child to the house the roof to the house. And we can be sure this child is always the instance that we return here. So we can be sure that this is the roof because we have no options in here. So next thing is adding the levels. Um, so yeah, we register a level factory that is doing almost the same thing, just here it's not setting the child, it's just adding the child to the list of levels. This is what we did before, just in the factory builder support way. The same with the material. Here we just create, in the new instance, we say, okay, if this is an enum, then just use the enum. If not, then just create the enum out of the two string method or the string itself. And here, now we say, okay, we only return material, so we can, don't have to check it, we can just set it. So we are done. The only thing is the roof, uh, rooms, sorry, and this is as well very straightforward. We just instantiate in the new instance, and then we want to set the parent, but just for another option, sometimes it's easier not to set the parent, but to set the child. So we ha you have these two options here. In this way, I say, OK, if my parent is the level, then I can set it here to the rooms, my room to the level rooms. Or and I can do the same here with the room in this case. But in other cases, this is just simpler to do, the, do it the other way around. So here I can set if the child that is set on my factory, so then it's the parent factory that will get the set child method called. So here, okay, now I get a child set. Okay, then um, if it's a room, then put it into my rooms. So sometimes you want to act from this side, from the parents. Both options here. So these are the three ways that I had, uh, that we had for creating the same thing. But, for using the factory support builder, it gives us additional options that are very helpful for special cases. How much time do we Can you have a look? Seven. Okay, I hurry up. So, one thing is for collecting external data. So, the thing is, here we in rooms, but the temperature temperature for the house, and if the temperature is not set in the room, then use the temperature of the house, otherwise take the temperature of the level uh, or the rooms and so on. So it's just getting these level up stuff. So for implementing that, we have this nice attribute delegate. This is a delegate that got called everywhere if we have an attribute called like the registered named, in this came a case, temperature. So how we say, um, okay, take the temperature out of the attributes, if it's there, uh, and if it is a number, 
No? If there is something, then just put it into the context of the builder. The context is just um, a context of the current node that I'm working on. Um, and as well, as down here, I have the parent context. I as well can access the context of my parent. So if there is a number, I just write it as the value temperature, uh, as the name temperature into my context. And I can do some things with it later on. And if, it's, if I don't have the number on my own, I just have a look to the parent's context and take the temperature from there and use it. And if there is some information, then I can put it into my own context and I'm happy and can use it later on. Um, there's one thing to show up here is the method set variable. That therefore, I can set some dynamic variables for my builder that can be used later on, and we will use that soon. He would say, um, when creating the room, I just have the normal factory with only one thing. Here, um, I have these on handle node attributes method on a factory. So here I can say, if a, a attribute is handled, I want to have a hook in here. So, and if the node, and if I say, okay, let's take the temperature out of that, uh, out of the context that had been set in this attribute delegate. So this is called after the delegate. And if there's something in there, and my node is room, then take my builder and have this room temperature variable, dynamic variable that I just created, and this is a map, and then put there which is in here. So later on, um, here, later on here in my code, here I do all the stuff, and I get a map with all the temperatures. And in the bedroom we have 60 degree because it's in here, and in the storeroom we have 50 degree because it's in the cellar. And if we want to add that as well, if we want to have some cooling facilities and some heatings in there, but we don't want to really need this in our, uh, in our node tree, in our DOM, you would say, in the browser, uh, we as well can use transparent nodes. So these are nodes in here, but they are not reflected in the model in here. So, but these are changing the temperature in this room. So this room normally should have 50 degree, but here in the bedroom we have a cooler, so we have 55 degree. So what we have to do is just to regi rest, uh, register these factories, heating and cooling. And in the factory, these temp here we just use the same thing with different names, because one is plus, while the other is minus. So we say, okay, um, here in the new instance, I return just a map with a modifier. Hmm. Why that? Because I don't want to create really something. I don't want to create a node, but I need something to transport my value I just got here down to my set parent method, where I want to do my other actions. So I just use a map. I could as well have used a list or whatever, own class, what you want to. So here I say, okay, in my set parent, so um, now I take the temperature out of my parent context, that's where I am, and add my modifier. This is this what is the value that I saved in here. So now I have my room temperature and store it in here and I'm happy. Yes? Okay. So this way, we have our 55 degrees in our bedroom, as I said. So another common thing that is useful is that you want to take control over a closure. So here we have a bell. But this bell shouldn't be a normal creating node. It should be an action. So if this bell, if someone is ringing the bell, so he is calling the house.ring, then please execute this method. So this is the thing that we normally want to have, but we just got loose, and now we want to have it back. So this is as well very easy, because we just have to add a factory, bell factory. And here we have to 
to overwrite the is handles node children and return true. The default is false. So this means this factory is taking care of the closure itself. This means all the normal behavior in adding, uh, using, setting parents and childs and attributes ha um, and all this stuff will not take good in this case. So here I say, if I do that, I get a hook on the on node children. So this is the case when I um, get, a, a, a get this called. Here I say, okay, on my builder in the current instance, property bell to this closure. So later on, if I call that, I can just call this method because it's a property in the house in this case. So another thing where we don't have so much time that just to show very fast walking through is how can we do some kind of interlink which for creating doors? The problem is doors are between rooms. Find the same door in both rooms or you can define it only in one room but you don't know in which of these two rooms and which one comes first. So we have to take care that we might have doors where we don't have both rooms registered already. So, for example, um, food storage, laundry, somewhere here. Here, the kitchen is from the living room to the kitchen. There we have a door, but at this time we don't know of any kitchen. There is no kitchen. But now we have it later on. So, take care of that. We can't just say, okay, in the instance we create, this is the room factory, we create a room, as usual, and we get the level context. The level context is, as we had these context of the instance, but I want to content, um, context of the level I'm currently in. The problem is that because rooms can be inside of rooms, I want to have, uh, have to go levels up until I reach the level. So it's not always the parent because it could be the grandparent or the grand grandparent. So because of that, I just made a little um, a little method. There's nothing. Don't do any special. The only thing is that it's just getting my parent context and then getting upwards because there we don't have. And then we can get the context of the context of the contents, as of the parents. So this is just a helper method. So I take my level and on the level I take my room map that is in there, or that I just use here. This is something that hadn't uh, just created instantly in this moment. And then I put the room name as a key and the room in here. So then I have this room somewhere. It's a list of rooms or a map of rooms. And if I have um, later run, then I just stored it. And later on, when I create my door, where I have this door factory, um, I just instantiate the door. I don't want to reflect it in the, in the node as well, so I just use the same thing with the map before. But in here, I'd say, okay, let's take the level context, the same thing that we had, and then let's have a look, are there, is there the room where I want to go from already in this map? If yes, then I have both rooms so I can create my door, put the two doors in here and can return my door. If not, I just save it for hopefully in future when the other side or the other room in the, in the case what I had, the kitchen, will be created, then it will find the room where I came from and then the door can be created. So, and for the level, the only thing that I have to do is, okay, I, here I create my room map and my free doors. The free doors is where I just save the free doors that don't have a connecting room yet. Um, it's just creating this stuff that I can save in the other factories. And in here, when the node is completed, this is a hook at the end. So when the level, starting with the curly bracket and ending with the curly bracket of the level, and when the ending curly bracket is done, then this method is called. 
So when all the side inside with all the sub nodes are done, then I can say, okay, let's have a look to the free doors. Um, do we still have some stuff left where we can interlink the stuff? Um, so we can say, okay, is there anything with this name? Is there the other door? Yes, there is, and then just create the instance. Then we finally have all the cases that we have these linkage doors. So, and these are just some examples. So there are some things I didn't talk about, just for you to have some topics for studying or ideas. On the fact. can do something when all these register stuffs will be called. Maybe you are in need of that. Sometimes this is very helpful. Um, and for the factory builder support, there you have the and you have the possibility to register an explicit property and an explicit method. So we had this bell before. I implemented as a factory, um, but you as well can just add a method called bell um, that is in the context of the builder, available and can be used everywhere. Um, this is, for example, the scene graph builder is doing that for creating colors and such stuff. And the same thing with properties, where you just add some variables that can, that can be used inside of the builder. And as well, some, as we had the, um, on meth um, the attribute delegates, we as well have other delegates that you can set or add, this is the pre-instantiate delegate, so this will be called always before something is inst inst instantiated, the post after that, and as well a post node completion delegate. This takes place for all the factories, so the factory doesn't know, know the logic that we have here. So these are some kind of features that are helpful from time to time, and I don't think that I really captured everything. Factory builder support is very powerful, very helpful. You will need some, some time to think about it, but Bob, at least, he likes to work with it, with each option. Maybe you like as well. And I hope I got you some hints and information to start creating your own builders. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now and over the whole, the whole conference. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, with a builder, uh, did this way, like you showed, how do the editors, Eclipse or IntelliJ, uh, react to that? Do they provide, uh, are they intelligent enough to provide for completion where they're using the builders? If you use the builder support and the builder factory support, um, at the moment, unfortunately, not. So this is not static compiled. Um, but IntelliJ helps a little bit more because it um, will detect repetition. So if you are already have that somewhere else. Uh, but if you want to make a statically compilable um, builder, you have to do it with the closure stuff. And you have to add the add delegates to annotation to the properties so that the compiler will know what we have there in the closure stuff. Um, interestingly, just uh, got a similar question before this talk or before the talk before that. And I'm just, maybe I find a way or we find a way to get around that. So maybe we find a way how we can help the compiler. Uh, but I'm not sure I didn't think it through yet. That is right, with the GDSL file you can do that. Yes. So, yeah, right. I just forgot. So, yeah, it's right. It's not compile static, it's just the helper for the IDE. And you have the same thing in Eclipse. Don't know, it's called very similar, something else, DSL. Um, and then there you can do the same thing there. So, this helps. Thank you. Any other questions? So I thank you and wish you a very, very pleasant conference. Yeah? Um, later on, I will um, put all the slides on SlideShare.
and I will treat my stuff. And I think if you follow the great, uh, the, 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 the great conf tweet or me, you will get the, the link where you can download it. So thanks.